Hello, it's Jacob again, and welcome back to Helicopter Lessons in 10 Minutes or Less. Today we're going to be talking about translating tendency. So what is translating tendency? Well, let's take our helicopter system. Just like before, we'll be using a counterclockwise rotating helicopter system. Now, translating tendency is the tendency for the helicopter to drift in the direction of tail rotor thrust. So in a counterclockwise rotating system, there's a tendency for the helicopter to drift to the right. It's also why you see a helicopter tend to hang left wheel or left skid low when it's at a stationary hover. So why is it that it does that? Well, let's blow it up to a slightly bigger drawing. Here's our mast. We'll draw the fuselage around it. Our rotor system turning counterclockwise. All right. So due to Newton's third law of motion, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So this rotor system is turning counterclockwise. The pivot point for this is going to be right around the mast. So as this helicopter is, or rotor system is turning around counterclockwise, it's pushing against the fuselage. So it's turning the fuselage, when uncompensated for, to the right. It's turning it in the opposite direction that the main rotor wants to travel because of that equal and opposite reaction. So. This is causing rotation around the mast of the fuselage uh, because of the main rotor thrust on the, uh, on the helicopter. So if this were completely uncompensated for, the fuselage would just continue to spin around and around to the right, being completely uncontrollable. So what do we do? We mount a tail rotor. A tail rotor is an anti-torque device. It's meant to stabilize the heading of the he helicopter and give us the ability to even fly this thing without spinning around. In constant circles. So this helicopter uh, with its tail rotor now is taking the airflow, pulling it through the rotor system or pushing the tail to compensate for that right turning of the fuselage. So it's turning, it's pushing all this air this way to the left to uh, prevent the tail rotor from turning to the right. So it's pushing it to the right. The tail rotor thrust is pushing the helicopter or the tail of the helicopter to the right. Now this is compensating for this rotation of the main rotor thrust. So now, with this tail rotor pushing against the torque effect of this main rotor, now we have some kind of heading control, and now we have authority with our pedals to be able to turn where the helicopter is uh, when we're flying. But because of that, now we have two things working against us. We have the main rotor, uh, or correction, the nose of the fuselage wanting to turn to the right, the tail rotor being pushed to the right, and that manifest is the entire helicopter drifting to the right, and that is translating tendency. It's also known as torque effect. It's the drifting of the right of the helicopter due to main rotor thrust um, and tail rotor compensation of main rotor thrust. So if this was j just left unchecked, every time you picked up to a hover, it would naturally just drift to the left. So we have to compensate for it. So how do we compensate? Well, one way is rigging. And what do I mean by rigging? You can either rig the flight controls, and this means that you rig the flight controls so that you already have just an, a slightly increase in pitch to fight this right drift. So you have an increase in pitch of the tail due to gy gyroscopic precession. This is going to manifest 90 degrees later as an increase in pitch on the right side, causing uh, a counteraction of that right drift. From the translating tendency. Uh, another way uh, you can have something like your transmission being mounted slightly offset. So say instead of right in the center of the helicopter you shift it slightly to the left and this is going to cause a shift in your center of gravity which would normally cause a helicopter to drift to the left but because of translating tendency now they counteract each other and it's at a stationary hover it just shifts the center of gravity. Uh, another technique for this, for compensation, would be a flight management computer or some kind of flight management system that automatically makes these inputs for you whenever you pick it up to hover. It knows that you're picking the helicopter up and it makes the necessary flight control input to maintain a stationary hover. Uh, lastly, and this is this, this is mainly for your archaic type of helicopters that don't have any of this, you have your good old pilot input. So you pick it up to a hover, helicopter wants to drift to the right, so what do you do? You give a little bit of left cyclic and that counteracts, just like in your flight controls or your FMC, that counteracts that right drift 
by ace increasing the pitch over the tail, which manifests 90 degrees later, and stops that drift to the right. But in all three of these cases, what's going to happen? The rotor disc tilts left to fight that right drift. And because of that, the, uh, the fuselage always, always, always follows the rotor system, just like a pendulum hanging underneath it at all times. Uh, with that disc tilted to the left, it's going to result in a left skid slash left wheel low at a hover when you're compensating for that translating tendency. So it's as simple as that. It's the helicopter's tendency to drift in the direction of tail rotor thrust. It's all caused because of Newton's third law of motion, action and reaction, where the main rotor is fighting against the, uh, the fuselage. We compensate for it with a tail rotor, and because of that, both forces are pushing the helicopter to the right, and the helicopter will drift to the right. So to compensate for that, we have rigging, a flight management com uh, system, or pilot input to compensate. All right, that wraps it up for translating tendency. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them in the comment section below. Hit like if you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Once again, safe flying.